morning and welcome to Frank's School. Boy, this looks like a lot. I think today I'll erase stuff as I deal with it because I really don't want to be too long-winded. Uh, uh, sixth year, 46 day first video, I'm going on with water wheels. I have about one or two more uh, times that I videos that I want to talk about water wheels. Uh, and this time my subject is stepped wheels. When the water comes off one wheel and then goes off another wheel. Uh, Oh, but first of all, this season has been has turned wet. It's the end of June, and uh, there was a brief window where guys could make their hay, which was lucky, uh, because now it's wet. And uh, and and so in a way, you know, it's more fun for me to talk about water wheels when there's actually water coming out of the mountain. Well, it still is. Uh, at Hagen, I, I showed that children's park at Hagen. There is more uh, at Hagen to see. Uh, there's even, I think, another water wheel or a turbine or something. But if you go to the playlist called Hagen, you can see that if you want. But I don't want to go on forever. All right, well, this uh, uh, stepped wheels. It made me think of this thing called the coastline paradox. Um, studying fractals, uh, you find I ran, I'd run into this once, the question, how long is the coast of Britain? And the fact is you can't actually say that. You can't say how long it is because it depends how minutely you're measuring it. That's, that's been known for quite a long time and I think it's called the coastline paradox. Well, it applies to falling water because, uh, <clears throat> you know, how many times could you have a, a water wheel or a waterfall? Well, it depends how small they are. Uh, uh, <clears throat> so it's kind of a judgment call. And, and uh, you know, the, the big famous or standard uh, water wheels are, they use uh, a natural feature that's already there. They'll start with a waterfall, which nature has made, and then use it. But uh, it doesn't have to be like that. <clears throat> well, fractals is quite an interesting uh, matter uh, for me. I, uh, anyway, uh, so how many times are you going to have steps like that? Uh, well, I'll come back to that in a minute. Another thing, uh, the penstocks, there's the word penstock, uh, that's a case where instead of having a bunch of stepped water wheels, you go clear up to the top and, and you keep in a, a penstock, a, a pipe, water going down, not, a water wheel then is not driven by its weight, but by the pressure that the weight makes in the penstock. So it comes out a nozzle at the bottom with a tremendous blast. Well, th well, there are places in the world where that has been what people have turned to. Switzerland, for example. Uh, there was a time, I don't think I mentioned this before, but my wife and I were traveling in Switzerland at one point, and we, we found ourselves driving back and forth across this, this huge pipe. And, I didn't really at the time know what it was, uh, and later I realized, well, that, that was a penstock. We were going down sort of the access road um, to a penstock. That was in Valais. Later on in Switzerland, uh, we, uh, I was with a group of students, and our, our bus was up at, uh, or our, our bus went up the, uh, the valley to, uh, no, not Andermatt. Yeah, no, Andermatt. I think it's under my, uh, at, at, the, at the top of Lake, uh, Lake Lucerne, up, up through, and, and as we made that, it, it delighted me because we got to climb up that amazing road and then back down uh, the, each of the two or three nights we were there. But as we were going, you could see these double penstocks coming down. Norway has them too. Uh, they're an example really of centralization, I think, the centralization of power. Instead of having it decentralized in, in little spots where it's, it's going to be used on site, by centralizing that power, uh, then you can uh, make electricity and, and uh, of course, that serves then the whole country's penstocks. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not too enthralled with penstocks. I, I, I'd like to have, have an example of one or two here on the farm to be able to teach with, just to show what they are. The Merrimack River comes to mind. I, uh, I lived in New Hampshire, as far as I'm concerned, too much of my life. I, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, really care for New England uh, for myself. And I lived near the Merrimack River. Well, it's known for its mills, or it was known for its mills. Uh, 
And b unbelievably, I'm thinking some about taking a drive of a four or five days back to New England, a place which for me it's almost like revisiting a prison because I wanted to be in Pennsylvania, not in New England for, oh gee, 20 years. Uh, or maybe not that, but part 15. Why would I go back? Well, I would go back with different eyes now. I would go back and I'd like to study, stay off the main roads, stay against the river, and not just the Merrimack River, also over the upper reaches of the uh, uh, Connecticut River and Kentuckuk River and stuff, and, and look at the water, the remains of those water-powered mills there. Uh, now, step the wheels. There's a real famous example of it, the ruins of what the Romans did at a place called Barbagal. It's in France, I think. I say QV because if you'll just go online, Google it, and you'll, you, you'll see videos about it and pictures of it, although it's in ruins, but it's, there's animations of what it might have looked like. There the Romans had eight, step, eight sets of stepped wheels. There were double ones. There were, so there were 16 water wheels all being turned uh, from an aqueduct. Really, really worth checking out. Uh, now, about four years ago, I traveled to uh, Portugal, and it was my intent to go with a group, but I could not, my charisma just didn't do it. I, in the end, I, I ended up, the only one who would travel with me was my German friend, Shirley. And, and we made an, an unbelievable trip, really. And I had gone into that in my mind, designing this tour as falling water in Portugal and Galicia. I might not have called put Galicia in there. I think I did. Falling water. Let's go. I wanted to go see the water. This, this almost had to be northern Portugal because southern Portugal has water, but it not, not the falling water. And I didn't mean the ocean water. I meant falling water. And the name went on, Spirit, Work, and Joy uh, in Portugal. Uh, and for spirit, the best example I can think of there is, well, two of them, Lamego and Bon Jesus de Monche. Uh, bon, de, bon Jesus de Monche is more famous than Lamego, but we went to both of those places. And there, uh, the water is stepped, but not for the purpose of work. <clears throat> it's been fashioned into waterfalls or little fountains, one after the other, as it comes down the side of a mountain. Uh, really, really neat. And I don't know how many places in uh, uh, Portugal that's been done, but, but there's the two really famous ones. And we saw them both. Here's a, uh, if you'll look at this, uh, I'm trying to think. I, I think this is the vi a, a video where you can actually see La Mego. Uh, at one of the places, my camera ran out of memory. In this video, third day, tenth <coughs> video, uh, tenth day, second video, if you go to <coughs> the second minute, 15th second, <coughs> there it's not La Mego, but it's uh, the drive as we continued on. And uh, it's such an amazing drive. Now, my filming was not good, and, and there's better ways to see it if you really get curious about it. But we're going down these switchbacks down among the vineyards uh, uh, of the Douro uh, uh, River. And uh, why I put it included at this point is because we see a, a, a penstock uh, a couple times, I think, real quickly. I stopped. I had asked, Shirley was doing the driving. She was my driver. And we stopped at one point at the top of a penstock. I wanted to see what it was like, but everything was kind of fenced off, and, and I didn't have a, uh, I, it, I didn't film it. it. Must have been again the I didn't have memory on my camera. But anyway, that's an example of spirit uh, of spirit. Uh, you know, these are holy sites, uh, pilgrimage sites. Uh, the uh, the joy. I'll jump down to here, at the forest of Busaco. Uh, there, uh, that is not necessarily w r religious, it's purpose, but the Fonci Fria, which means uh, uh, cold fountain. Uh, there, Shirley and I have been there actually on two different occasions. The first time uh, we found it, and I filmed it. The second time uh, was two years later, and uh, 
her husband Thomas was with us this time, and it wasn't exactly our intent, but it became convenient to go there. And there's the year that I, that I would use, where once again the water is shaped into steps, not with water wheels, but stepped and for joy. But Folon y Picon, this, I, I, I sort of save that, uh, because uh, that was amazing. It, it wasn't Portugal, it was the very south of Galicia. Uh, Portugal is actually almost within sight there. And uh, Picon, uh, uh, Folon and Picon are two uh, uh, l little mountain streams, really, uh, hard to explain. They, they come down the mountain. And there, if, if you'll go to this video, I have a whole playlist devoted to that. Uh, but if you go to that video, that's about the best I, I, I think I could, I could show you. Where we hiked up it, and there's something like 21 stepped water wheels going up, and 26, I think, coming down. Each one uses part of that fall, and each one originally drove its own water wheel, tub wheels, uh, simple, you know, uh, Portuguese wants to grind grain. Really an unbelievable uh, spot, uh, and, and I really would hope you would look at that. In the Alps, there are similar situations, I think. I, I didn't study it to find out where they are, but I've seen it before, where, you know, they're so rich in falling water, uh, and uh, they've got uh, stepped, stepped mills like that. All right, uh, so what am I left with? Okay, here, on this farm, uh, I have two, there, there's really two cricks is what I call them. You could call them brooks, I suppose, or, or creeks. Uh, some people pronounce it that way. Uh, runs, uh, they come down, uh, I mean, if this is north, here's the west one, here's the east one. And they come down into Oppenheimer Run. That's that's the official name of this Oppenheimer Run, and it it's perennial. It runs all the time. These dry up. Well, uh, and and on this western one, what I've done is I've got five places where I'm stepping the water, where I defined it off to to make or at least to plan a water wheel, and then on on the east one, I've got seven spots in my mind where I want to uh, have, have a water wheel. So, so they will be stepped wheels. Uh, and uh, I've talked fast, but I just didn't want this video to be too long. So I'm going to stop now. Bye for now.